Welcome back to New Rockstars. I'm Eric Voss, and this is my reaction and breakdown of Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special trailer. This being the latest Marvel special presentation streaming on Disney Plus on November 25th. That's Black Friday. Now, I love Werewolf by Night, and I am really digging these hour-long dips into the MCU just before my theories start to get pruny and wrinkly. So let us react to this trailer and then break down the big stuff that you might have missed in it. Here we go. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I just saw on the calendar that right now on Earth, it's almost Christmas time. We don't have time for trivialities like Christmas. But Peter That's me at work. About Gamora being gone. Oh. Maybe if we go to Earth for a really wonderful Christmas gift. Oh no. Oh no, this is so sweet. <gasps> Wait, special. How old is Groot? We are looking for the legendary Kevin Bacon. <gasps> We're looking for the legendary Kevin Bacon. No. If your voice is small and mousy, I think maybe he didn't hear you. <laughs> oh, they got him. You're coming with us as a Christmas present. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is gonna be great. Cosmo. Are they just on trampolines? <laughs> oh, yes. I want to spend every Christmas with the MCU. Last year, Hawkeye was a lot of fun. A lot of those episodes. Very Christmassy. And this is like the, the, the sweetest kind of MCU Christmas story I could imagine. It's just the other Guardians wanting to give Peter Quill a nice Christmas because he misses Gamora. But also, these extraterrestrials having no sense of what Christmas is. And let's be honest, it's probably not only going to be a, a sweet Christmas nostalgic trip for Peter Quill because he misses Gamora. It's going to be because he misses his family back in Missouri. Now, as with Werewolf by Night, a big question for a lot of people were, how canon is this? How connected is it to the MCU? How essential is it to watch? Well, I think everything with the Marvel Studios title in front of it is essential. But Werewolf by Night actually had some pretty significant tie-ins with the MCU, I think we're going to see. I mean, in introducing characters like Man-Thing, Elsa Bloodstone, Jack Russell, obviously going to show up in horror titles in the future, things like Blade and the Midnight Suns. In this case, we're meeting Kevin Bacon in the MCU. The only downside of that is now Kevin Bacon can't really play an actor in the MCU. It's kind of like David Hasselhoff. Well, I guess you're not playing an MCU villain anymore, unless they want to recast him or like disguise him under prosthetics and makeup and VFX. So where in the MCU timeline does this story take place? Well, obviously it must take place after Avengers Endgame because, you know, they're missing Gamora. They were all dusted during the blip and then Endgame ended with uh, Gamora, at least from another timeline, going her own separate ways. Really, the clock here that we're looking at is Groot. Groot is definitely beefier and bigger than when we saw him in Avengers Endgame. He's bigger than when we saw him in Thor Love and Thunder. His voice is deeper. There was some Guardians of the Galaxy 3 footage that was shown at D23. I think Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special is set before Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Groot's facial structure doesn't change that much. It looks like the teenager's head on just like a, a body closer to what he looked like in the first Guardians of the Galaxy, but he's definitely thicker. Like remember Groot in the first Guardians of the Galaxy was pretty stringy and thin. Now our man has not been skipping any days at the gym. But I mean, how does like a tree add muscle mass. Now look at my hair. It looks healthy, right? Like healthy enough that you might be thinking, hang on Eric, did you send your hair to a spa for a week and get away? Well, the answer is no, I did not. My hair is healthy thanks to geology. I know you're all thinking geology, isn't that the 13 times award-winning skincare company with over 5,000 five-star reviews? Well, yes they are, but now they also do hair and I'm super excited about it. Geology has a new custom control hair care line with brand new co-wash. Co-wash is anti-shampoo. Shampoo strips your hair of the essential oils the scalp produces and can leave your hair dry and your scalp dry too. Typical shampoos use harsh chemicals to clean your hair, but co-wash uses friction and scrubbing motion to remove the dirt and grime from your scalp, keeping your hair clean and healthy without damaging it in the process. Because good hair comes from having a healthy scalp, co-wash focuses on cleansing and nourishing the scalp, removing the buildup and cleansing the hair without big lather, harsh ingredients, or stripping the hair of its natural oils. Co-wash puts you 100% in control of your clean based on how much product you use, how long you use it, and how often you apply it. Think of co-wash as your skincare for your scalp and your hair, because ultimately, hair care is skincare. Geology hair products are great for all hair types and are color safe, and you can either get a cooling co-wash with tea tree and aloe, or a smoothing co-wash with avocado and coconut. I'm a tea tree and aloe kind of guy. Why? Because you can never be too cool. To celebrate the launch of their new product, they are hooking you up with this unbelievable special offer. Click the link below to get 70% off a skincare trial, but not only that, use the 
second link to take an additional 15% off the new co-wash, which is already 15% off for the pre-order. You're not gonna wanna miss this offer. I like that Kraglin has this conversation about looking at the calendar on Earth to figure out what time Earth is on relative to the rest of the universe, because this is a rare example of like time and relativity being acknowledged in the MCU. Like it doesn't make sense that, you know, other planets would have the same day and night schedule as what would be on Earth. Realistically, what would happen is probably what we see in Interstellar. You'd have some planets that are just completely time dilated out of whack compared to Earth. But in this case, they're all relatively on the same calendar. It's just they don't have things like Christmas off world, which would make sense, except there was a god of carpentry in Omnipotent City in Thor Love and Thunder. So theoretically, there might be Christians that exist off Earth in the MCU. Drax and Mantis head to the Hollywood home of Kevin Bacon, whom they know Peter Quill is pretty obsessed with. Kevin Bacon came up as like a hero that Peter very much admired during Infinity War, the star of movies like Footloose. Now a question I have is what ship are Drax and Mantis taking to Earth? Because it doesn't look like the Benatar. It actually looks like it kind of opens up and then folds in on itself as it navigates this asteroid belt through the UNTN. That's kind of like the universal hyperspace jumping grid that allowed them to go from galaxy to galaxy. Cosmo the space dog is returning from uh, the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. He was in the collector's vault. He did make it out before the whole place exploded. Good to see. Now ultimately, yes, this does really just seem like a wholesome Christmas adventure. But if we think about it, this is an adventure orchestrated by Mantis. She is an empath. She can sense other people's emotions. And that has like a tactical function in these stories. Like the fact that Peter is depressed might be an issue that is blocking all of the rest of the team. Like they're not able to take a specific gig or there's some mission that because Peter's just not up for it, it's holding them back. Honestly, my hope for this is that Kevin Bacon can just join the MCU as Kevin Bacon. And that future MCU titles can just have Kevin Bacon as someone who exists on Earth. Like he could be someone who ties into Secret Invasion. Is Kevin Bacon replaced by a Skrull? Kevin Bacon can show up in a uh, King Dynasty or Secret Wars or Loki or She-Hulk season two. Kevin Bacon can just be someone that they check in with or get some advice. He can show up in cameos the way Stan Lee would just kind of show up in cameos. That way future MCU titles can just kind of have fun with what they want to establish about Kevin Bacon in the MCU reality. Could he be like a vampire? Could he be any internal who exists on Earth? Could he be a mutant? Just someone who discovers that they're a mutant and, get, and we get to play with that now going forward. Now, when we first learned of this title, James Gunn has said that he's a big fan of the Star Wars Holiday Special and wanted to go for something that has a similar vibe in the MCU. And if you look back at the Star Wars Holiday Special, that story was really about Chewie trying to get home to his home world and his family to celebrate Life Day. There's a similar thing happening here. They were just trying to take one character who's bummed that he can't be with his loved ones and trying to just give him one nice day. And yes, a lot of goofy things and jokes and hijinks and dance sequences are gonna be part of it as well. I think we're all really gonna enjoy it. I can't wait to see this on November 25th. Of course, we're gonna be doing a breakdown of it because we break down everything in the MCU. You can follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at EA Voss. Subscribe to New Rockstars. Follow New Rockstars on social media. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.